I'm Julia Indichova. I'm a reproductive healthcare activist and author, and I moonlight as a peace activist. Some time ago, I was asked to offer a talk on a subject of my choice, and the title that walked onto the page was God Said Meet Me Halfway, Honoring the Hunger of the Soul in the Age of Facebook. So, how does God call to us? How are we to meet God halfway? And what does Facebook have to do with it? I was born and raised in former Czechoslovakia. Only four years before I was born, my mother returned from a concentration camp in Bergen-Belsen. Her mother and her son, who was eight years old at the time, my brother, did not return from the camps. So the first nine months of my life, I lived in a body that experienced one of the most hideous chapters in the history of humankind. Whenever my parents recounted stories of the first weeks and months of my life, they described me wailing day and night with such force that neighbors would come by to check if my parents were neglecting their newborn baby. Now, it's true that it could have been colic. Maybe that's all it was. But that's not the story that's true for me. As my life keeps unfolding and I become clearer about the forces that compel me to choose one action over another, in my mind's eye, I see that wailing infant I once was as a soul calling to be seen and heard and tell a story. What's true for me is that all human beings, whether they are 120 or just out of the womb, want to be heard. They want their stories to matter to someone else. They show up on this earth to make a contribution no one else could make, to deliver treasures no other human being can deliver. Some years ago, I read a poem by Yehuda Halevi, an 11th century mystic, and the lines of that poem landed in me as a revelation. Talking about his search for meaning, his search for God, Halevi writes, I have sought your nearness with all my heart. I called you, and going out to meet you, I found you coming toward me. We long to link our lives to some larger mystery, a mystery some of us call God. And we sense that mystery calling on us to remember the task we volunteered for when we beam down here to play the human game. As our technologically evolved selves become increasingly more disconnected from the promptings of our hearts, it becomes more and more challenging to keep hearing the next invitation to meet God at the next designated meeting place. What about Facebook? How does Facebook enter into meeting God halfway? For a number of years, Facebook was not a welcome presence in our house. To a parent of teenagers, Facebook was a distraction my children could do without. But uh, after I uh, started experimenting with it as an outreach tool, my view of Facebook shifted quite a bit. Because, of course, Facebook is just that, a tool. And like any other tool, we can use it to distract us from the task at hand and to silence the call of the soul, or Facebook can support us in sending out our stories, our views of the world, and our suggestions for birthing a saner way of treating one another. We can speak our truth or upload a video, and with the help of Facebook's mysterious algorithms, we can direct our call toward the other souls that care about the same things we care about. At least, that's what I understand can happen if we are doing it right. For much of my life, 
I was a rebel in search of a cause. In the last two decades, I've become a reproductive healthcare educator and activist and a peace activist. So I have two Facebook pages, Fertile Heart for my fertility work and Fertile Hearted Human for my peace work. On the morning of the talk I was asked to give, I was sitting down to work on this piece and I checked my Fertile Hearted Human Facebook page to see if anyone clicked on the video I posted to honor International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And there was a number one next to the shares icon letting me know that someone saw the video and chose to share it on their page. The man's name was Tom Hartman and next to his share was a note. This short video brought me to tears. Tom Hartman and I never met, but Mark Zuckerberg, a young man whom I also never met, made it possible for me and Tom Hartman to support one another. Tom and I created our Facebook pages, acting on our desire to call out, hoping someone would hear us and respond. And someone did living our story as if we were perpetually, personally addressed by the divine is a choice. It's a choice to see our desires and our disappointments, the people we connect with through Facebook or at a concert as God's invitations, being perpetually addressed by the divine is also a choice to receive the small and the large assignments in our lives, whether it's a health challenge or a request to offer a talk, as God's invitation to walk out and meet our truest, purest, most stunning selves halfway. <laughs>